Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ is pretty active in the uh, in the Vatican Miracle Examiners. Oh my gosh. So I just started that. I'm not going to lie. I actually have only seen the first episode. I didn't get absolutely oh, everything I got done. I know. I but... got to hear Kyle's opinion on this. This is going to be pretty good. Okay. Yeah, our resident Catholic. <laughs> so uh, a few things. Honestly, as far as like the job goes that they're portraying, that is an actual job that the Vatican has done in the past. Uh, the last time that I ever heard of them doing anything like that was like back in the early 2000s i'm sure they still do it um they honestly do have this job where they just go out and they look to see if like a crying statue is a miracle or something like that that is an actual thing that uh was evaluated by them by the way there's a that's uh, crying statue i think it was in central america just like they have in the show the first episode that's absolutely <clears throat> incredible and i i don't doubt it actually yeah <laughs> that that was i don't think they considered it a modern day miracle um do not quote me on that because it has been like 12 years since i've looked up anything about this um but no yeah this is it's an actual thing the vatican does and they go around and they do all this and i i like the concept and the idea that like it's just two dudes that are trying to find miracles and it's kind of cool that they're not necessarily trying to disprove miracles because they are they are super excited about their faith and they would love to see modern day miracles it seems it's just you know they take it with a critical approach they try to be objective about it That's right it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like i i think the whole sort of almost buddy cop kind of aspect to it i of like, know you know here's here's our ancient text and faith dude and i'm doing this with math and science and i i, I don't it's it's so it's so campy it is. I, Everything it about such, this is so it's campy. such exquisite camp, and I I can't get enough of it. You just it's, have to watch the, the fucking OP to understand the entire tone and style of this show. Yeah, because, I mean, like, you know, it, it starts off as if, like, you're about to listen to the A-Team or something. Yeah, it's like, you and know, then all of a sudden you... Here's our group of miracle examiners going out to find, you know, whatever. I'm like, this is the best. And then as soon I as you this. as soon as you hear that, it just starts going. And then, and then on top of that, it's like, oh, okay, it's kind of rockish. That's cool with like a little bit of that edge to it. And then, yeah. and then out of nowhere, you hear, oh, oh, oh and I'm like, <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Gregorian chants mixed with rock music, and it's so fucking edgy and cheesy. It's ridiculous. It's, and they they play Ave. Yeah. They play Ave Maria in they, the first episode because, of course, they do. They f fucking, not even satirically or ironically, they played it straight. They're just like, hey, guess what? Ave Maria for this scene. It's like, yeah, okay. It All right. so fucking ridiculous. I love, I love every, it, though. I love it. It's absolutely I, crazy. <clears throat> there are a few things I don't like just looking at the first episode and, like, four minutes into the second episode that I'm currently at. Mm -hmm. Um and it's it's has nothing to do with the style or the substance of the show uh although i am a little nervous about that going forward because as far as anime goes anime has a really good track i should say really bad really bad track record of like if the catholic church is representative in an anime almost inevitably there will be some point in which it becomes the bad guy and I mean, so yeah yeah, Pretty much. and so it seems like they're gonna start out with this like interesting plot of these two dudes. They got the faith, and they're they're priests, and everybody's excited about that. And then like at some point, you find out it's like some fucking like angels and demons conspiracy with the Catholic Church and the Pope's the head of it, and they're killing yeah, people or something. And and I'm <clears throat> using my religion. Right, and then it turns into, like, all of a sudden their faith is shaken and, and they're no longer, they either become atheists, agnostics, or they're religious, but they're not with the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church is evil. It's Why like is it the, always the I, Catholic Church? It's because, because it's like, the it's largest... It's prominent in yeah, Japan. It's, mm. And it's the largest Christian church, period. <laughs> the largest yeah. unified Christian church. Ah, um, <clears throat> so, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's both a church a business and a theocracy it is a government 
So, like, there's a lot you can pull from, especially with a rich history. So I understand why they oh, do yeah. that. It just makes me sad that, like, I'm like, hey, it's it's that religion that I belong to. Oh, we're the bad guys now. Okay. <laughs> and I see I that mean, in, like, every fucking anime. <laughs> but it hasn't hit that yet it hasn't and i hope it doesn't or if it does do something it would be really cool if it went the angels and demons approach about it which i don't know if you've guys seen that movie or read that book but at least within the movie which is what i've seen um i liked that it showed that yes there was um there was corruption within the church and yes there were bad people and some bad people in charge but The church as a whole was not necessarily evil. What they're trying to do was not necessarily evil. It's that the people were at fault, not necessarily the moral ideas or something like that. And so, like, by the end of the movie, they kind of weeded out all of the bad guys, except for a select group that, like, were sort of bad but also sort of good. Okay. It was kind of weird. I I could kind of see the anime going that direction. And that would be cool. That yeah. would be cool to show that, like, because they're they're pushing this really strong thing of like these two priests are super t- by the faith, and it, it, you know, and they love Jesus and all this other stuff. And there, it oh, kind of yeah. screams it at me that I'm like, ooh, something's gonna happen later. <laughs> but like, well, I mean, yeah, of course. Like, if you look at the show, it's like I can see a few pretty predictable plot lines going for this thing. Yeah, but I will still. <clears throat> absolutely watch it oh no it's just so crazy and over the top that it's just like you have to watch it it's so stupid fun to watch that's exactly that's what it is i would probably define this as stupid fun because it's just ridiculous and i love it for being so ridiculous um i okay i did get off on a tangent though the things that i don't like about it are actually pretty simple it's it's like half the half of the first episode was at a dutch angle and in words just everything's really <laughs> slanted and dramatic for no reason which was really funny until all of a sudden they started like moving the camera at a dutch angle and then just like panning to somebody's like fucking eyeballs not even the rest of their face we're just really close to their face and i'm like this is kind of uncomfortable it's kind of, it's kind of like the cameraman was a shaft character <laughs> It was pretty ridiculous. It was, and and I don't think that it's necessarily like horrible. I just think like cinematography wise, it's like we could be looking at a scene where there's a dead body on the floor, but instead we're staring at somebody's really close up face, like close up face, and it I was like that. Ah. And that was another thing too, is that like there's certain things that happen in this show that either come out of nowhere, like they end the first episode with. Like, I'm sorry, the priest has died, everyone's crying, this one kid seems to know something, and all of a sudden he's, like, freaking out and having a panic attack, and they're like, Father, Father, he's having a panic attack, and then the father goes, Oh, shit, that statue's crying. <laughs> <laughs> it came out of nowhere. <laughs> no, yeah, like, I mean, I I do have to admit, there are parts, especially in around episode three or so, where there's some really weird pacing issues. Right, but... and I think and I think that's a bit of an issue with this show because they they even had a moment right before that where it's the first death of the show. You see a guy dead on the floor with his head bashed in 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 a demonic circle, and we s- stay on that for like mm, maybe ten seconds, and then all of a sudden they just it, like the scene ends. The scene ends within like twenty seconds, maybe. It was mm-hmm. really quick, and I was like, it feels like this should be more impactful. Like, this is like a death we're talking about, and it's the out. first person. What is it? Oh, I feel like they should have been, uh, you know, checking that out. We should have gotten a little bit of that, you know, the, the, the miracle examiners are examining what the fuck just happened, you know? Yeah, yeah and they, they looked at the so. body a little bit, but then they, they asked a couple of questions, and then all of a sudden there was an argument that erupted out, and that all made sense. That was fine. Everybody's really worked up. There's a dead guy on the ground. But then all of a sudden, it's like everybody forgot there was a dead guy on the ground because they're, like, talking, talking. All right, moving on to the next scene. It was yeah. really quick, and I felt like it would have it kind of felt less impactful than what it should be because of the first death of the series and it's bloody it's dramatic and these people yeah. are behaving like it's t- like it's just another tuesday yeah like it, it, it's really odd and the way that these episodes are going it feels like you know th- this is supposed to just be like a one court right yeah 12 episodes yeah so i mean for this like they're they're spending an awful lot of time here just at this first location and so 
you know, it doesn't feel like we're going to have a lot of, you know, small separate cases for this show. It feels like it's going to be maybe one or two or three uh, very lengthy, self-contained kind of stories. So it yeah. feels weird that they're rushing the pace so early like this. Right. Like, they should be spending a, a lot more time and giving a lot more detail and attention to some of these things. And it's just, it's odd. It's it's not like bad enough for me to be like, Ugh, it's garbage. But right, the merits I, I of wish... the show outside of this make up for for a couple of like hiccups. Yeah, I, I I just I wish they were a little more cognizant of how they were presenting the pace. Yeah, but there there could be far worse things for this show. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. And then the only other thing that I had an issue with. Is that like this show is fucking worse than like Bacchano or any other one that has a full <laughs> cast? I felt like I was watching just a long animated credits scene because every five seconds somebody else popped up their head and they're like, "Bloop, hi, I'm Look, Father Jacob." I, I, <laughs> I, I, I have I have long since stopped trying to keep track of the names and the people. Names. Well, because one, there's so many of them, and two, they are dying at such a clip that it doesn't matter. Yeah, it just it. It, it, it kind of it upsets me because it, they paint, they, they kind of frame everything like it's a murder mystery, but then they have 30 people suddenly introducing themselves to me yeah. all in the same episode. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, uh, Zach, does this, hey, Matt. does this remind you of another anime about a murder mystery with a Stop. lot of people? Can we, can we please not? That one episode of Haruhi Suzumiya? <laughs> I don't want to talk about my Oiga. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I really don't. <clears throat> Except at least in this one, people are actually dying. I mean, I guess that's true. My Oiga is like, everyone's dying except they're not? Just kidding? <laughs> no, but I, I, I will I, say I, I'm I'm oof. real excited for this show. I, I it's It's wonderful cheese is all it is. It's like super religious cheesy edgy action and i kind of enjoy that yeah i there I mean, there's a whole lot of parmesan to grade off this sucker <laughs> i mean i could kind of look at it and tell it was going to be this kind of show and, oh, God, and i was just like so. you know that's okay i'm just gonna watch the vatican anime anyway <laughs> <laughs> the vatican anime nice point yeah, but i i, I mean like I don't. I don't think anyone should be looking at this show and thinking that it's going to be like this highbrow religious dissection or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> like I mean, this this is pretty much on the level of like. I'd say this is on the level of like Helsing or something of that nature, <laughs> to where like, are you, this is real cerebral and religious, or and it's like, uh, honey, no. <laughs> I think I think you actually kind of hit the nail on the head with that one. Like I I think Helsing kind of, this kind of screams a little bit of Helsing to me. Like j- just in the fact that it's dealing with this religious subject matter in such a way that is like completely irreverent in this sort of way, but you know, not like, you know, it's it's making fun of it necessarily, but it's approaching it in such a way that it's like what are you doing yeah it's it's the typical like japanese anime thing of like you can clearly tell they did their research into the catholic church and like looked up very specific things but then that's as far as they got because they don't really care about the religion itself they just thought it was a good place to write a story yeah but again that's fine it's 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 a it is a fun show yeah and that's that's one of the things that I'm just looking for this season. I want something fun to watch. There's a heck of a lot of fun things to watch. Oh, good God, yes there is. This, th- I, I gotta say, as far as, like, since we've been doing this general anime podcast, this season's probably been my favorite. I'm so excited to talk about it. There's, like, so many things that I'm just like, even if they're not amazing shows, I'm just like, that was, it was enjoyable. It was, that was a lot of fun to watch. And it's weird, too, because it's summer of all seasons. Yep. Yeah. It's very it's very strange that a summer season uh, is usually um, not very good. And I think a lot of people might be thinking that. And, um, that you know, you look at summer and they go, oh, it's summer. It's not going to be great. Wait, there's no good anime in the summer. 
And uh, perhaps maybe that's where that mentality where people are saying, this season sucks, comes from. But, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of good anime. I mean, there's tons of good anime. Or even just yeah, watchable like, anime. Like, like this, I, I'm just... I know we were talking last season about how I was genuinely surprised by how many shows I'm watching, but I'm I'm really surprised by how much anime I'm watching this season. Like, you I'm know, it, yeah, I'm watching way more than what I usually do. Yeah, like it, Matt, like you said, you know, it, it's not like everything is amazing, but you know, I I haven't yet watched a show where I was like, well, this is garbage. I'm just gonna drop this. Yeah, there are very few of those kinds of shows. Yeah, which is surprising considering you're the madman that decided to watch the first episode of every you every show monster. It it is a monstrous task. Um, why? I I still don't really know why. It was one of those ideas that comes up like at like five a.m. in the morning, and you think it's a good idea, and then you wake yeah. up and you're like, I don't know if I want to do this. Uh, but I guess I wrote it down, so I guess I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and here we are. I have now watched, I don't even know how many anime. I think there's like 35 in total <laughs> or something. Holy shit, man. There's a lot. Um, I think I've only dropped maybe eight of them. <laughs> so. I mean, comparatively, yeah, that's not a ton. That's not as many as I thought. <clears throat> not as many as i thought and i don't fully know how to process that uh, well matt let me ask you this then because you i know that you ordered your list what's actually top on your list for this season uh princess principle oh that yeah. is a good choice i'm i'm so happy with how this show is turning out so far i'm so happy we're writing about this show i'm like i'm so excited we're writing about this show because like i'm i'm two episodes in i actually haven't watched the third one forgive me but like it's just ah i'm so excited it's like i thought it was just gonna be a bunch of cute girls doing spy things and then nothing else to it because it kind of and i, I feel like that's kind of my bias or, or prejudice like going into the show but like that was immediately disproven in like the first i want to say like five minutes oh yeah like absolutely for sure it's it's surprising to me because it, it, mainly in the way that you were approaching it too i was thinking well this is either going to be one of two things because i mean you know we we looked at the production cast for this and there's there's a lot of big names doing this show that's what actually initially turned us on to it wasn't it because we were yeah. we were thinking of passing and then we saw that we were like wait what the fuck who else connected to this yeah that was that was a really interesting kind of experience <laughs> we had with getting this show it was almost like yeah. pure chance. We could have never predicted that. Because yeah, we, for for varying reasons, like we had very few shows that we actually considered writing about. And yeah, it, it was really just this weird bit of chance because it was just like, well, Cause we, Princess Principal, I mean, like, it sounds interesting. Who's working on this? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, what sold me on this one, at least to watch the sit down and watch the first episode, was the cast, um, and then the fact that it was the same people that were doing flip flappers as far as studio wise. I don't think it's the same crew, um, but studio wise, it's the same studio that did flip flappers, and I was like, I like flip flappers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who doesn't like flip flappers? <laughs> oh, wow. Horrible I'm, people. I'm sure that, You're all horrible okay. people. Okay, if you hate, I'm flip sure flappers. that there's some people who do, who don't like flip flappers, but that was a good show. I like flip flappers. Um, no, I'm excited. Perfect. I'm excited for this, and I'm excited to see where like the stories unfold. And Matt, I remember that you had mentioned uh, at some point while, when we were off the podcast and talking that um, you thought it was really interesting that the story is told out of order, and I kind of agree with you in that. Um, mm -hmm. It's very, it's very cool that we're having so far these small little snippets of like episodic things, and the fact that it's being told out of order kind of adds to the idea of like we still don't know who to trust or right. anything like that like i th i felt like i had a decent idea of who the characters were and then i saw the second episode and i was like oh well i'm completely wrong <laughs> it's like never mind i don't anymore yeah but it's one of the interesting things about shows that are out of order like that um yeah like um 
it not to an, not to the same extent, but like Jin Rui did that, and I thought that was an interesting way of going at it, and like a bunch of other, mm-hmm. a, a few other ones have done it to like a really great extent. Bakano um, did it out of order, which I thought played well to to what they were trying to do. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, like, how much do we actually want to talk about this? We're gonna like, be writing about Princess Principal, so like, I don't, I don't want to dwell on it too, too much. Yeah, that's what I was figuring. Watch but absolutely, right. everybody should be watching this one if, if like, you're gonna be watching anything this season. Yeah, like if if you are if you're not gonna be choosing many to watch this season, at least do yourself a favor of giving this a go. So good. Yeah, for real. Um. So, Kyle, what is the show that's like that you've been getting really into this season? Maybe something that like surprised you, or um, <laughs> if we're gonna be honest, I could narrate. I could I could give you a very serious. I'm actually super psyched about this, and then I can also give you an answer of this one might just be for me kind of thing. <laughs> Um, the, the one that's just for me is definitely Suzuru, or, or yeah, Suzuru Children. It's su- 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 All right, we're, we're going we're gonna to have a I hard don't... time with this. Surezere? Surezere? Surezere. We're having a hard I'm time. I'm sorry. We just, yeah, we just this completely butchered that. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, All right. No, but whatever it's oh. called children uh Sure-zure. yeah it's thank you it's so fucking adorable i love it so much it's like it's seven minutes and it's all about just people falling in love for the first time but what makes it interesting is that like a, a, a little while ago i watched a similar show called honoba log um that you and i watched it together i think um, i mean it was like what was it like 20 minutes the entire show yeah, it was like 10 episodes and they're two minutes each. Um, and it's a similar idea. It's just people in love and you get a little snippet of their life. What I find more interesting about this show is that along with a lot of like confession scenes that you see in the first episode and different things like that, we then keep going with these same characters. So it's not just the confession. Uh, it's also, you know, their first time dating. It's also like what happens oh. after that. Um, and then you also have other ones where they break the mold and they confess. And then the other person says, ask me in a, in about a week <laughs> and different oh, things like that. Cute as hell. Oh, it's adorable. It's fucking adorable. I love it so much. And I also like it too, because it's technically interwoven because all of these characters are at the same school and this is all happening roundabouts at the same time. So like you'll see some of the characters from a previous scene walking through the scene of another person's or like you see us one, two characters in a class or you see two characters and there's a confession in the snow going and it's real adorable. Um, but mm-hmm. then it actually zooms out and, sh- and and pans up and it shows a character in the window looking at them and that and that convinces her to do her own confession which is the immediate next scene oh wow yeah it's it's kind of neat yeah it's kind of cool little things like that and then you also get different interactions between some of the characters sometimes um it's it it is a to to go into the show you need to understand that it is in no way drama whatsoever <laughs> It is just pure cuteness and nothing else. I mean, I, I feel like trying to build up a great sense of drama in like a seven minute per episode show would be a little bit of a tough task. Especially, yeah, especially mm-hmm. when you have a cast of characters that's, I mean, kind of decently large when you think about it, just because you have a lot of the people um, at the school at the same mm-hmm. time. Um but it's it's really nice, and I like and I like a lot of the different pairings of characters, and I also like that they don't always follow a traditional thing. It's it, one of my favorite characters in the show, is a girl that like just doesn't really get romance at all, and like this one guy keeps confessing to her, and she's like, and she completely misconstrues it like every time. And it's oh, really I know what you're great. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> and then I I'm... I also like a couple of the other pairings where it's like the they they go through the confession and then like they actually have a non-answer to it because both of them are just dorks and they don't know what they're doing (laughs) 
it's it's I'm, great. I might actually have to watch this. Dang. It, yeah, ab- absolutely. I would recommend that one if you just want something real cute. It's pretty quick too. It's a thirteen minutes, so it's half. Half. Of the is episode. it? I thought it, I thought it was seven. Thirteen is even better. Doesn't seem like thirteen. Yeah. It's it even has a tag on Annie chart. It was like drama, and I'm like, no. It has. It, it, <laughs> you mislabeled this. It's here on Annie list too, or Annie chart rather. Yeah. That's for strange. That is not correct. <laughs> no. There is zero drama. If the drama is a girl forgot her umbrella, so she relies, so she relies on somebody else, I mean, and then the confession happens, and then yeah, if that's somehow dramatic, sure. But like, no, this there's no drama in this. I can super get behind that. It's just so comfy, and that, and I love I love me just a little comfy show to watch. Um. But no, the the other one that that I would say is my currently my favorite one to watch because I, I kind of do tend to go towards slice of life is uh, Isekai Shokudo. Oh yes. I just I first off I love the concept of this because it's it's so interesting to learn about another civilization or a parallel world in this case through the use of like food or through the use of you know just taking them out of their location and then they just kind of like explain things through that or just it's it, it's kind of interesting i had an idea forever ago for like a story i wanted to write in which it was like you're just looking at an innkeeper at an inn and you just hear stories from people as they drop by the inn and stay for the night or something like that and it's that's exactly what this is basically except for along with like the stories that they may tell or the things they may say while they're at the restaurant um that accidentally ends up in the in a parallel world Along with that, you also sometimes get a, a neat little backstory to the character, or like you get to see their their story leading up to them finding this door that just randomly appears for all these people. Right, and so like it's it, it, in one way it kind of scratches this itch I have for like essentially food porn, where it just it's all these neat like gorgeous looking dishes, and I'm like I want to eat that. I'd there are several times that. when yeah. I've been watching but, the show where I'm just like, I'm really hungry right now, and I really I want to eat that specifically. Yeah, I hated, I hated watching this like before my lunch break or something like that. <laughs> it's just not a good idea. But like, yeah, it's 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 so neat in that you know it, it kind of follows in this theme of some shows that use food as this like central element of, um, you know, the storytelling isn't necessarily done through the food, but it its presence facilitates a deeper um a deeper learning of the characters or the setting or things of that nature yeah. and i love how well it actually does it in this show and you know what i also felt like it was a kind of a dual purpose thing because i i felt very much whenever they had an episode in which they, they he just simply made spaghetti it was a pretty fancy spaghetti but he just made spaghetti with with uh, red sauce and i don't even think meatballs um, it was just like spaghetti, it was red a sauce, meat and, sauce, yeah, and then and then a parmesan but. on top. But you know, I had that growing up, and but what I loved about it is that like it made me kind of think about my first experience with that type of food and how that went for me as a kid. Like the first time that I tasted spaghetti, and I was like, oh man, this, I love spaghetti; it's my favorite dish, kind of thing as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, that's kind of how I felt. I felt like it's it's a neat way to like look at foods that we typically may take for granted, and like see, no, yeah, that is awesome. Actually, that is that is a nice thing to eat. You know, I hate spaghetti, but man, I wanted a plate of spaghetti after I saw that episode. What do you mean you hate? Spaghetti? I hate spaghetti. That's a fucking. Do you monster. guys have Moving a problem on. with that? Yes. <laughs> I mean, like, it's each their own. I mean. It doesn't help that you're wrong, but to eat stuff. Wow, I'm not wrong. I just hate spaghetti. No. <laughs> I think you guys are wrong for liking spaghetti. How's that? Anyways, okay. I, I think it's a good oh, show. Throwing... And I and I, I genuinely enjoy every episode that I see. It's like, mm-hmm. the, and I, I barely see anything that I keep even, even like critique in some negative fashion. Um, it's like. I, there's nothing really to this show that like necessarily needs super critiquing. It's, it's a show about food, and every now and then some people from a different world come and eat that food, and then you usually have like two or three of them in an episode. 
you get a little yeah, story because, and some food. Uh, yeah, it's a little Cause, story cause, and some food. I mean, like that, that that's essentially just what it is. It's it's like a collection of small little, you know, vignettes and Exactly. We're we're sort of getting some character development with you know, our with our main characters, uh, you know, Aletta and, you know, Tenshu the cook. But, yeah, I we mean... we get a couple of unique things. Like, I remember in episode three, they commented that the chef actually isn't the first owner of this restaurant. And I, yeah. I kind of like that idea because they also show that while he's very comfortable in cooking, he's very uncomfortable with all these characters coming into his shop. He sort of gets it and he has some experience, but he still even trips up every now and then, like, trying to figure out okay what's the cultural thing i'm supposed to do for this guy yeah and like i mean it's neat to kind of get all this stuff at the same time it's not really the reason why i'm invested in this show no. like it's it's more just like the character interactions like if we get deeper into the lore of this different world and such i'm like okay cool but i mean you know, if it goes this weird direction where there's some demon overlord that has his heart swayed by some dish of food that comes into the cafe. Also, if this happens, it's mine. TM, TM, TM. Uh, <laughs> copyright. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, it's it's not why I'm invested in this show. It's just seeing the neat character interactions, checking out the cool food. Yeah. And the, yeah. And the neat little self-contained stories. I like the self-contained stories. I actually like this formula. Normally, I don't even, like, I don't think I would go for this normally, um, but for some reason, this show has made it really appealing and made me also really hungry. So, um. <laughs> and I also like that, uh, like I, I noticed this in episode three, but I, I realized thinking back on it, they also did it for like episode two. Um, is that like in in at the end of the episode, you actually see all the characters from that episode are returning customers to the restaurant. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. That's really yeah. neat. It, it's it's a nice little scaffolding effect. Yeah, because you you see them then moving on to somebody else's vignette, but then you also see the character that you spent some time with possibly in the background. Oh, like hey, like they're that. back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Good to see them. And that's, yeah, yeah, that's a neat little thing. I like I like. That. It's just the little things in this show that make it so comfy. And I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you that, don't have to have a boring show to be comfy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah, it, this show has major comfy factor. Great stuff. Yeah, so those those are the two ones that I like. I know they're both comfy shows, but I like my comfy. I, hey, man, there ain't nothing oh, wrong man. with that. I like comfy Gotta sometimes. Gotta get your comfy on. But, Yeah. Um, hey, speaking of isekai, does anybody want to talk about isekai smartphone? I didn't watch oh, it. Oh boy, I'm not going to. We can talk about this. <laughs> Let's go. No, I will say, Matt. I'm sorry. I actually did not get to this, so you're probably the only one that actually has seen it. Oh. I heard from both you and a couple other people in the community that the first episode you should watch, and then you should skip out on the next eleven. <laughs> Wow, what? That's what I was told. <laughs> so, um, I don't know about episode three. Um, episode one was pretty normal. I mean, it was it was standard. It it wasn't a bad standard, or it just was maybe a little bit above if I had to compare it to any other fucking uh, what is this a harem comedy? I guess I don't know. Yeah, I heard that like the first episode's like super just in like inoffensive. Um, I mean, maybe it might even be a little bit better than that. Like it's oh, okay. it's just uh like there's some interesting elements like um just as someone that has watched a lot of these kinds of shows and seen them where they go, I feel like it was probably actually had a better first episode than a lot of them. Um there wasn't anything weird. There wasn't anything, like, really jarring. The characters were kind of fun. There was nothing really creepy or weird or anything that even really hinted at being, like, a harem comedy kind of thing, which was fine. Yes. See, this is the hmm. crazy thing, is that you say that, and, like, not too long ago, I read Annie Film's article on the first episode of Smartphone, and it's the exact same thing. Like, you both, without even, like without you having even read that said the same thing about that first episode it was like oh that was pleasant you know it's it's actually a little bit above above average and all this other stuff and i'm like that's 
this is crazy because I expected this show to be a shit show from the get go. Yeah, like straight dumpster fire. It's pretty much what it sounded like. Right. But that's kind of interesting to hear that it is not a disaster from the start. Yeah. However, well, Matt, you, you mentioned episode two to me. So, um, I said from the start. Yeah, you did say from the start. <laughs> Um, episode two is not the start. Um, but let me just say that I went into episode two with some pretty okay expectations, knowing that it probably was going to get worse. And I was like, oh, wow, I guess everything that was bad from episode one is now just, uh, transforming itself into episode two because the main character literally becomes Jesus (laughs) and he doesn't even use the smartphone. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. No, I'm dead serious. Explain oh, further. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you used the exact terminology you used last night when we were talking about this. Well that's what I've written down here, so I'm glad I'm being consistent. <laughs> he literally turned Jesus. I mean and I'm serious, like so in episode one he kind of learns a little bit that oh he can use magic. Um, which that's cool. Like I mean, yeah, it's a, it's an isekai story, kind of standard thing. Yeah, like he's in a fantasy world. They have magic. He learns how to use magic. That's fine. Um, mm-hmm. So in episode two, he just learns he can use all the magic, um, <laughs> like literally all six elements, and then some seventh element of magic that literally is only like supposed to be like one spell a person or something that you're not even supposed to like know how to use. Um, you're supposed to discover it. Um, but let's just say it was discovered in the same way that Kirito discovered his uh, sword skill in Sword Art Online. Oh, so incredible horseshit. Um, yeah, let's put it lightly. Um, so, oh, but it doesn't end there. He um, learns how to use this ability, and he's like, wow, I can use this. And then he mm-hmm. was like, hey, what's your ability? And the other girl was like, oh, this is mine, you know? And he's like, oh, I can use that one yeah. too. <laughs> oh, and by the way, these aren't normal abilities. These are abilities like, oh, I can warp across the map. Like, or I can heal people or pull objects out of their body. Or So we're, we're talking, okay, so he is pretty much straight Jesus. Uh, well, uh, it, later in the episode, and, and the reason I compare him to Jesus is because he literally resurrects somebody from the dead and cures blindness in the same episode. Oh. So, oh, and by the way, um, oh, I see all these uh, colorless null spells or whatever they call them in the show. Oh, by the way, he can just memorize them all. Um, he just can use every single one of them, just out of a magic book. They have a whole book full of them. He just starts uh, learning them and using them. It's pretty amazing. And this, and so this is episode two. two. <laughs> Oh, so episode two, and he's turned on God mode. Yeah, well, not only that, though, like, he, um, like, obviously they're adding more, gradually more characters to the cast and stuff. And then, sure. also, he cures the blindness of this noble lord person, and, and the guy's just like, hey, you can have all the money and free passage to wherever you want to go. Oh, fuck So, off. you're free to do whatever. And I'm like, well... I guess this show is just uh, gone now. What's the point of having so, the smartphone? And I think that's what yeah, made me mad the most. What's he going to do with the smartphone? What do you need it for now? Yeah, because, I mean, like, if you essentially can go anywhere, do anything, you know, purchase or acquire anything or one or whatever like wh- what is the fucking point when you have all this and it's like oh yeah and i can take pictures or i can or hey you want to fucking check out flappy bird this is some hard <laughs> shit dude like if that motherfucker has flappy uh, bird on his phone it's worth way more than just the smartphone in a fantasy world i'm just saying like i i just i'm i haven't even seen it and you're right it's it that makes me mad that it's it makes me so mad and the thing that the thing that makes me the mad the most is that now the smartphone is useless. The whole gimmick of the show is now gone. That's why I was watching the show. I wanted to see the gimmick. <laughs> this title is a misnomer. <laughs> Basically. And I'm so mad. And there's, and there's of course, no chance that they're going to, like, pull a Metroid and he loses his... I mean, that could be pretty everything. interesting. <laughs> uh, but I don't see that like, happening. That w- yeah, I know. 
Like I, I I'd watch it if it did that. I'd watch it's it like, too. Here we'll spend a, we'll spend a whole episode building up all these god powers you have, and then just lull no. It's it's. I would love that show. Actually, that would be fantastic. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, it'd be neat. Just completely breaking the mold. X, <sighs> but uh, that's not what we have. Yeah, we have something completely different on our hands. Um, Incredible. so uh. I don't. I guess I'm gonna watch episode three, um, but I don't know if I'll be able to recover from this. Would you even? Would you even suggest that I start watching it? <laughs> Do you want to laugh at how bad episode two is? Because <laughs> it's actually pretty funny, and just how quickly it turns. Yeah. Here's the thing: is that I really want to give the first two episodes a shot. Just so that I can see how far, like, how low we can possibly go. And how quickly we can reach there. Okay, alright, well, maybe I will then. We'll see. <laughs> if you have the time, there's more important anime. Oh my god, to. yeah. There, yeah, there's, there's shows that are much better uses of time. And also that don't waste smartphones. Yep. That's expensive. Yeah. Like gamers. Like, Dude, there's I'm not some gonna serious lie. Mobage, there's some serious Mobage stuff going on in gamers. Like, that gave me Puzzle Dragons flashbacks. I'm not going to lie. There are two things that amaze me about gamers so far. The first is that they actually are, like, representing a lot of, like, incredibly accurately, they're representing a lot of modern games that people play, which is fantastic. Like a they, have fucking, they have fucking PUBG. Yeah, Player Unknown's OP. Battlegrounds is in the OP. I don't, and then I like they have Counter Strike and a That's bunch amazing. of other ones. And I like that they're not just showing gameplay, and it seems like it's it's not just like oh look, it's a little bit of gameplay that kind of looks like the game. They also like did, for instance, in the Counter Strike in the first one, they also had him like jumping up and down and trying to see over the fence. Which was mm-hmm. hilarious to me because I remember doing that <laughs> in both that game and in other games, especially Halo Reach, because the backgrounds and everything were so fucking beautiful. I love that they're actually dissecting those small little tidbits of like things that actual gamers do in games. Yep. They uh, they also have a lot of actual Arc System Works fighting games, which is a little weird to me because I spent a lot of time playing Persona 4 Arena. And having them show literal gameplay footage from that. That fucking blew weird. my mind, yeah. Oh, so that's what that was. Way. Yeah, oh, they have that. I, I'm i pretty sure. Matt, they how had, could you like, miss some, that? I mean, I saw it, was it. I just didn't know what game Persona. it was. Like, yeah, they had like, some Guilty Gear uh, and Blast Blue shit going on on some of the consoles. Oh, I did see the Blast Blue stuff. Yeah, okay. and I was like, this is. Because, like, it, initially I was like, wait, that looks a lot like Blast Blue. Wait, that is Blast Blue. <laughs> what is this? And so, I don't know, like, it's, it, it, Kyle, it, in a lot of what you say, it's really cool to see how, like, it's not like we're getting fucking Neto Gay or something like that that's showing, like, huh, gamer culture, guys. Like, it's, in a lot of senses, it's kind of on point for how certain aspects or or certain like types of gamers actually behave or interact with their games yeah and i think it's kind of nice to watch right yeah and i i I like that it's exactly like you said it's not like they like show hey you know we're a gamer too we're hip and they like show some small little snippet it's like they're actually dissecting gamers and the idea of surrounding gamers within at least I've only seen the first two episodes, but at least within the first two episodes, very much so. It's like they showed the hardcore first-person shooter gamer, and they showed the you know the hardcore um, fight, fighter gamer, and and it wasn't just oh look here's a here's a person like doing the thing, haha. We you know we're being inclusive. Yeah, I also like that they also showed other ones that don't really get represented. Like our main character is a guy that just casually plays games. He's not even that into them. Um, and I like that within the first two episodes, they kind of clearly show that that's okay. That's totally okay to just be to just do your own thing as far as gaming is concerned. 
I think that was especially pushed in the second episode whenever they had the super popular guy who used to be into games and the main character kind of shows him, you know, you can still play games. It's not like it's not like super nerdy to enjoy games or anything like that. And he's like, no, you're right. I kind of missed that. <laughs> and his life's a little bit happier because of it. Yeah. And, and kind of the thing about this, too, is, you know, in there's so many shows that, you know, if they're focusing on video games or something, a lot of it is like, you know, haha, check out these funny gamer in jokes or things of that nature. But there's actually a lot of really well-rounded deep character development going on in this show like i i seriously did not expect to get as much development in some of the main and side cast characters as we have in these first two episodes yeah like I, it's I think genuinely I surprising especially like in the second episode the popular dude like we had a whole episode dedicated to him and it was fantastic i love delving into like his character and like the way that he changes over the course of that it was super cool. Yeah, and, and it's not just like, you know, this sort of cliche, I was a nerd back then, but then I turned into a cool dude by putting away my games. Yeah, like, it's like that's know, how it starts it, but that's not exactly what they do with the character. Yeah, because like he actually goes into this sort of, you know, revelation to where it's like, I mean, I feel like I leaned a little too deep into this, maybe. There wasn't necessarily anything wrong with me enjoying this thing that was very much uh, a solid part of my life for a time. And, like, it's it, it's so neat. I'm very excited to see where the show goes. I hope it doesn't crush my hopes and dreams for it. I'm Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous because everywhere that I go, there's an etchy tag attached to this show, and so far there's like been nothing that deserves that edgy tag within the within the two episodes i've seen and so like i'm a little nervous but like so far it seems like they're just doing a really just enjoyable rom-com kind of thing with with some actual like deep dive into like the the gaming scene yeah and some light dramatic elements here and there yeah but and i, that I, definitely I know that it's like tropey in its own way but I, I kind of find the, like, hidden romance thing that um, the popular girl has with the main character. Like, I kind of find it kind of cute. It's it's actually pretty endearing. It's, like, it yeah. doesn't It doesn't make me roll my eyes at every turn. Yeah. It's so far within the first two episodes, it's been pretty all right. Not to mention, I can't hate a show that does a banana peel slip joke and plays it straight. <laughs> Like, I just can't hate a show that, like, unironically and unapologetically just has one of their characters slip on a banana peel. <laughs> I can't believe they did that. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> Never would have expected that. And, yeah, no. it also came out of nowhere, too. <laughs> that was the best part. I saw I saw them cut to the banana, and I was like, wait, really? And then she, and then she slips on it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's been years. <laughs> <laughs> like they actually did it <laughs> my god oh it was amazing yeah game Gosh, gamers yeah. is quite a show um it's showing a lot of promise I'd, and I'm, I'm excited mm-hmm. i i would like to keep my opinion that i don't hate it um but yeah i know that you said you've said that you're not like super enjoying it and i think i think that's totally okay i'm just i'm just curious like what specifically about it's it. it's this main character i can't like i can't <laughs> stand him for some reason he comes off he comes off as this guy um especially in the second episode this really bothered me i wrote like 10 paragraphs literally um Good Jesus Christ, like this man. really bothered me um he comes off as this guy that like likes games, which that's cool. That's fine. You can like games. That's awesome. I like games too. But um, yeah, um, go on. But like, he comes off as um, this. Is, here's an example. Like in the arcade, like the uh, the the popular guy, I guess. Um, he comes mm-hmm. up to him and he's like, "Hey, um, you're in an arcade," and. He's just like, you kind of look like you uh, want to play. Do you want to play some games? And he's like, the main character says, nah, I don't really want to play games. <laughs> and um, he's just like, you kind of look like you want to play, though. Like, is, do you want to? And he's just like, eh, not really. And I'm like, you like games. 
Why don't you play some fucking games? Well, but like that's that's some extreme social anxiety he's got going on. Yeah, right. Dude. Yeah, and especially because he knows this guy. He knows this guy's the, the super popular guy, and he's like, I don't, I don't want to seem like a nerd. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I'm I I don't think it's like this dissonance with his character. I think it's like, oh my god, this is a guy that could make me eat my own butt, and like, you know, scrunch <laughs> me up into an accordion. <laughs> Like he's he, this is a dude that could like, you know, telescope my spine or something. I mean, I, Matt, he didn't. He, I know he you didn't, don't want to hear. He this. didn't come off as threatening though. I know you don't want to hear this, but I've literally done that in an arcade before. <laughs> I can I can weirdly relate to that character, and I know that's pathetic because this main character is just a punk ass bitch. I know, <laughs> but like, <laughs> it just. He's he's a very wishy washy main character, but that's kind of the point. He's he's I, I like that they don't say that it's a bad thing that he's a casual, but I also like that they're also trying to push him not to be more pro or to be competitive, but to but to find a little bit more confidence in himself. And yeah. and I, I like that that show is doing that, but I do agree with you, Matt. He is very wishy washy, and I can understand why people would not enjoy. Yeah, that. like I mean, like, I don't yeah, even like, like people I, like I that in real from. life normally. Like just that like <laughs> super socially anxiety. Um, not like not not that I hate socially anxiety people, um, but there's this certain type of person. Um, and I'm sure everyone's probably encountered this type of person where they're, like, really into this thing. And then suddenly, like, you try to, you know, ask them to do something about the thing. And then they're just like, eh, I don't really want to do it. And I'm like, okay, so do you want to do it or do you not want to do it? Like, and I guess I just don't understand that at all. I don't, like, I, I can't, I can't really mentally grasp those people in real life either. So... Like, it's not surprising that the main character in the show is not doing it for me. It's just... Fair enough. It is just... It's so different from the way I would do it. It's either... With me, it's kind of like, okay, I'm just not going to do that if I don't want to hang with that person. Or, um, or yeah, I'll do that. Whatever. Like, there's no, like, wishy-washy in between. <laughs> like, I kind of want to do it, but I'm kind of scared. Like... It's just one way or the other for me, so I just don't understand Zach, that. Zach, make a mental note that if Matt ever starts dating somebody, we need to pull them aside and be like, listen, whatever you do, do not say, oh, whatever you want to do, or I don't care. <laughs> like, do not be wishy-washy with Matt. <laughs> let's, uh, uh, put, let's file that in the table of contents for the handbook we need to put together. What? <laughs> There's a handbook? <laughs> <laughs> rule number one of matt do not as be of, wishy-washy around as, matt <laughs> as of tonight we have a few paragraphs <laughs> yeah no but matt i don't think you're in the wrong and i i think no, that's yeah. that's totally understandable to see this character and be like fucking just do it <laughs> but i but for me personally i i see that most likely he's going to be developing over the series so i'm all right with him being a little like not sure and not confident in himself right now um, yeah. And we do even kind of see that a little bit in episode two whenever he almost fucking kills a guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but he gained a little bit of confidence, and I and I like that. And I also, I, I it's, it's a little bit of white knighting, but I didn't think it was done too horribly bad that he was like, listen, make fun of me all you want, but like, don't make fun of somebody you barely even know, talking about um, his, his love interest in the show. Um. Yeah, it was a little white. It was a little white ninety, but it, I thought it was it was still relatively well done. Yeah, um, and yeah, I I don't think the show's bad. I just I just hope the main character gets over this because I can't watch this. This is really hard for me to watch <laughs> and get past this. <laughs> well, another okay. issue here, Matt, is that you also <laughs> forced yourself to watch this and many other shows this season. Well, it's not like each show is kind of segmented from itself. This is actually the show I have the most written about out of all of the shows. So you did ten shit. fucking paragraphs about one dude. <laughs> it made me mad, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, all right, all right, fine. Mm. So, at, at least we can talk about a show where the pro tag is very passionate about what he wants to do, and he just does it. Welcome to the ballroom. Goddamn, you guys. I knew you were going to go there. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for Slender God People damn, Dancing. Goddamn, welcome to the ballroom. 
holy shit it's so good dude i very very tall very slender people doing inhuman dance moves it's Perfect. incredible with spines that bend like a fish it's amazing Oi. i'm not but like no lie as much as i will make fun of like some of the some of the character design in this show it's a beautiful show and it's doing a really good job i'm i'm actually genuinely enjoying this show yeah like i was i was a little there was something just about the character designs initially where i was like this man is a giraffe i am looking <laughs> at a i'm looking at an animal human hybrid right now because of the <laughs> oh, length no. of that throat beat he's got on him. Do this. monster girls yeah. doing dance things <laughs> whoa this is not the ballroom like, i watched did you guys watch some kind of kiss anime fan rip Oh well, so, you, I sorry. Did, I started reading the Dojenshi. Was that bad? Oh no! Oh, <laughs> that's why the Fujoshi hands were so. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> um, but no, like I mean, it, this this show has such a unique art style to it, like the the very almost like a Kabuki sort of highlighted lips, uh, in a way, like okay. Have you know? Have you noticed yeah. like their their upper lips are are very very yeah. very dark very prominent yeah i have seen i have noticed that yeah and and on top of that it's like i i mean very much the the art style of the show with the incredibly lanky bodies just it's it's like what they said in the first episode it just screams look at me like you immediately are like what is this which is honestly a good thing because as far as the story goes this is genuinely enjoyable yeah like it it really is, and I, I, I kind of feel like it's interesting getting this as like sort of a, um, I get I guess sort of like a, a conceptual follow up to like say Yuri on Ice or something, of this no, sort of like yeah, yeah. Al- alternative kind of sports anime. Yes, and I think that's a great way to say it because originally in my notes I did say sports anime, but that didn't really feel right for me while I was watching the show. I was like, technically yes. But it's it's I would I would say very much it's an alternative sports anime because especially with this show because it does a lot of things that you expect in a sports anime, and then kind of flips them. Like for instance, yeah. the rival character in this show is actually a really nice guy and he's just genuinely a good guy, <laughs> and you're rooting for him the entire time along with the main character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he he seems interesting, and I I genuinely really enjoy the cast of characters. Um, it's it is cool but something about the show it's it's kind of odd in that um i wish they would do a bit more actual ballroom dancing i think you're right and i would because I mean, it, we might get it's, some more it's, it's, it's 24 it, episodes after all isn't it oh shit is yeah it it's really? 24 that is correct. Oh, oh really? So okay. it's going to be a little bit slower than some of the other shows. Oh, that makes okay. that makes this that, so much better. Yeah. yeah. That that's fine then. So, because like I was thinking this was going to be like a one core thing. Yeah, and, and it was so... like the way that the pacing is going right now. You're like, I don't know how you're going to make it to episode twelve. Because I'm like, you know, is so we're going through like these preliminaries and these competitions and such, and you know, it, it was only until like it was only in episode three where we actually got any sort of extended look at any kind of ballroom dancing like there was neat snippets here and there but it was always like you know okay and do the cha-cha and the rumba and we'd have like a few like short seconds of like kind of dancing and then it like yeah some still frames i'm like i mean it's still cool but it's not the sort of fluid kind of uh, exhibition of this thing that i was expecting right especially as a follow-up or at least in as something that's coming out after yuri on ice who just blew everybody out of the water with both just their animation and how much they showed within that animation um and you get little hints of that in this show but no i do agree with you i even had it in my notes here i was like it got to the like one of the first competitions that they go and watch uh, and uh, I was like, oh man, I really want to listen to more of this Quick Step song because it was like this really soulsy like um, jazz singer, um, and she, and it was like, Wah! 
fun. And I was like, oh boy, this sounds great. And then it was over like it's seven seconds later. And I was like, ah, oh, no, come on. It was so good. It, it, like now, like in, in, and granted, I don't, I don't know how much we can really call this a follow up to your own eyes because technically the manga for this started in 2011. Right. Um, and I think yeah, it's, and, yeah. Yeah. And now, now the thing is, I'm not sure if this would have got an anime adaptation if say your ice was not as popular as mm-hmm. it was yeah and Personally i have to speaking, say I, I, think, I, I think it i think it probably owes some sort of legacy to it yes and i think it's also fair to compare to yuri on ice but at mm-hmm. the same time i also think it's something that stands on its own and we should kind of look at it as that way as well right. um but I, I i do agree with you i think like shows like this that are not traditional sports but kind of follow a sports anime theme or idea um i think yuri on yuri ice was it was it's obviously not the first one to do it but it's the first one to just have so much breakout success that i feel like a lot of shows now are going to be credited or or set up in the vein of yuri on ice and i honestly Mm -hmm. think that's a great thing i'm excited for that yep like i would i would totally love to see some neat other like and i hate to call like alternative sports or things of that nature because that feels like it's it's sort of no yeah and know, it's unfair to the like sport shuffling it away yeah it's unfair to to the the sport and the and the art in question because like yeah. dancing is an art and it is a sport it, or it's, it is a competition yeah. and it's a very serious competition too yeah no for real like there's a lot involved mm-hmm. in it but i mean like it's just it's just it's it's alternative in the sense that we have not seen any kind of sports anime like this up until fairly recently yes. i don't think or, or we haven't seen it in a large capacity, rather. Yeah. Like, I mean, every season there's always going to be, like, some fucking, like, baseball or soccer or some kind of sports-related anime going on that's kind of, you know, one of, one of like, the big five sports. I will flip my shit if there is an American football anime. Oh, my Can God. Can you imagine? That's Ice Shield 21, man. <laughs> oh, shit, what? Why? Ice Shield 21. It's old as fuck, dude. Oh, I gotta look this up now. Oh, no. it's incredible! Mm-hmm. Like it, like it's back from like very early two thousands. Oh my god, this sounds amazing. It's f- it's fucking incredible. I haven't watched a ton of it, but what I have watched is it's it's fun. <laughs> okay, so now I kind of said it was incredible, but is this like a sarcastic incredible or is this actually legitimately incredible no like matt, i actually i, want you, I, I want legitimately you to know, enjoyed matt, watching it yeah and I, I want you to know that the scores for this show are actually really good <laughs> but anyways that's not ballroom <laughs> no, <it's laughs> sorry not. um there's a ball but in no ballroom. i <clears throat> get out on on a different Don't topic actually. actually you know what i find interesting that you guys probably did not pick up on about this show that i fucking love as somebody who loves cinema all right music man but oh oh it's cinema okay <laughs> go for it no i could have launched into into a music thing but honestly they they I tend know. to they tend to cut off the songs so i can't really comment on them um but no have you ever heard of the uh of the much older film japanese film shall we dance which also had an american remake i've heard of it uh, okay no. I'm so really? uncultured. Um, I you if swine. you if you ever get the chance, I actually highly recommend it. It's one of Jam- Japan's like one of their. It's basically the Japanese equivalent of the Oscars. It fucking swept. Like it was. It's it just won awards. It's it's incredible. Um, and I remember I did actually get a chance to see this, uh, which I was so excited for because I originally saw the American remake of it, which is a good film. It's not great. But it's got Richard Gere in it. I kind of like him. Anyways, I um, I, I want to read to you something from my notes that might sound familiar. So, <clears throat> the um, as far as far as ballroom goes, there's there's actually a lot of parallels. So, a beautiful woman attracts the main lead to uh, to a dance studio where he finds an older goofy figure that actually ends up training him main character is rebuked by the attractive woman who thinks that he's only doing it because he's interested in her um and then on top of, and then on top of that he he then has to rethink it and be like no actually i do enjoy this for myself um and then on and then on top of that you know he starts learning and he starts working with a, a, bu- a couple of other crazy characters that then lead him to competitions 
it's like the basis for this seems like whoever originally wrote this has most definitely seen Shall We Dance? Because it, it borrows some of those aspects for this show, but it's not at all the same story. Um, but I thought it was very interesting to see the parallels between this and and the original Japanese film. Yeah, fair enough. Like, that makes sense if it was such a large cultural touchstone of the film. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they even did something, which I can't remember if it's in the Japanese one because it's been a while since I've seen it, but in the American version of Shall We Dance, there's a moment in which he's not convinced. He, he just went, to the, uh, he just went to, to the dance studio, and he goes away, and so he decides to, like, just kind of look it up on his computer, and, he, and all of a sudden he gets blasted by music, and he's really embarrassed that somebody else in the house will, will like, we'll be like what the hell's going on in there and so he like mutes it um and in this show they did the same exact thing he was like i'm not convinced let me at least watch the dvd and it blasts and he's like huh ah, turning down the music and i was like you've got to be kidding me <laughs> hmm. yeah okay i i didn't i didn't yeah, know that that's nice interesting, be interesting. Yeah. i might have to look into that it's it's an incredible movie and I, I love that i'm seeing a lot of those parallels in this that it screams to me that the author of of the original manga must obviously have seen shall we dance and probably was a fan of it um but like i said in no way are those the same thing and in fact they they start diverging very quickly at like towards the very end of episode one moving on to episode two so Mm -hmm. yeah sure uh, ballroom is yeah i'm yep i'm i'm hyped to see where it goes it's a fun no yeah I'm 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 so excited. I will never not say that this is Slenderman dancing, but I, I say that <laughs> affectionately for this show. I want to see these characters stretched to their limits. <laughs> oh <laughs> my fuck god! All right, so. <laughs> All right. Well, I just killed that conversation. So Matt, let me ask you a question because I want to move away from that fucking hard joke. You, wow. Speaking of sports, speaking of sports okay. anime, you saw Dive, right? Yeah, I saw Dive. I don't know anything about Dive. I think you should just um, dive right in. Matt, stop! <laughs> I don't know anything about this show, and is it really just basically a season two of free, or a season three of free? A season free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's contagious. I've started something. <clears throat> Please, somebody, just stop making puns and talk. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'll talk about Dive. I love you. Um, so, I don't know. I haven't seen Free, if it's anything even comparable to that. Oh, what? Matt, you are the QAnnie expert in this group. Sorry, I haven't seen Free. You fucking betrayer of my trust. Just give me a couple months. Is Dive good? Um, It's okay. Look. Um, it's uh, it's kind of got like it's a sports drama. I mean, it's I, I don't think it's anything special. Um, it's got the sports drama elements like oh, our club will be closed down if we don't send someone to the Olympics, and then some badass coach. Love life, okay. Oh, <laughs> not quite. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so this badass coach comes in, and she, like, tries to whip him into shape by doing him all sorts of, like, rigorous training, and, uh... Cool runnings. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, okay. uh, yeah, so they're preparing for that, and everyone, the main character's trying to better himself by, like, saying, I, I can do this, but he's looking up to his, uh, senpai idol friend, and... His senpai idol? Yes, and his slash fic other okay. Yeah, and anyway, <laughs> enough tangents. Um, he just looks up to him and he's like, "Hey, I want to be like him. Like, I want to be that kind of person that he is. I want to be awesome. I want to dive like he does. Want to walk like you, talk like you, and us. all of his friends think it's you know kind of a." bullshit idea like haha you can't be that good whatever so oh and then he's he's basically it, just proving them wrong for himself yeah kind of that's basically the show right. so it it basically sounds standard template sports yeah. it's a sports drama yeah okay well 
that's fine. Yeah, there's nothing nothing too exciting going on there. Okay. If 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 we want to talk about exciting though, um, classroom of the elite. I actually haven't watched this this season. Oh, Kyle, you're missing out. It's another. It's, it's got it's got Yokoso in the title, like freaking every anime does this season. I think there's only like two or three that do, but. Like Kyle, if you're talking about betrayers here, like you're missing out, my dude. <laughs> Yokoso. Um. So. I truly don't know anything about this except for the quick synopsis where it's a school that like, basically they get ahead by bringing the other person down kind of thing. Um, I, I don't think that's necessarily a great synopsis for this. Essentially, it is an... It takes place in this, of course, giant elite high school in Japan where the students there are like breeded and selected to be like, you know these are going to be like the leaders of society later on and so like there's a point system where you know they're given points and that's determined by you know the merit that they exhibit at school and there's like you know classes a b c and d and Mm -hmm. those are you know determined by you know your your ranking or worthiness so like if you overtake another class of points you know you like, if D were to overtake C class, the D class would become C class and vice versa. Oh, okay. That, that's kind of like, um... Bucket to test. Yes. Bucket to test. Yeah. Only instead like of I... being a comedy, this is kind of like playing it straight. Yeah. You know, I actually put that exact wording in my notes. Are you reading my notes? Yeah, actually. You... No. no. <laughs> like, I, I, no. Like, I was straight thinking this, too. Because I was like, wow, this is kind of a, a somewhat more dramatic bucket to test. With, like, stakes. Yeah, I do see that it does. It does still have a uh, comedy genre tag. This show can be pretty damn funny, actually. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, that that makes me feel a little bit better about it because I thought it was going to be like fucking dramatic out the ass no, or something it's, like that. It, no, 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 no. It's not grim, dark, super serious. Oh, okay. Which I was I was somewhat expecting that going into it a little bit, but. See, it's, I, it's, I was a little nervous just... about that because I didn't know if I was going to watch, if I wanted to watch a show that was just purely elitism um, and and just like playing that as straight as can be and be pers- being super dark about it. I was like, I don't I don't know if I want to watch that. I, I mean, if we're being honest, it is pretty fucking pretentious because like each episode title is like, you know, oh, hey, this is a quote from, you know, Nietzsche's The Antichrist, or this is from, you know, The Wealth of Nations. Oh, I see it here, yeah. Man is an animal that makes bargains. No other animal does this. No dog exchanges bones with another. That's fucking the title of the episode, that entire thing. Yeah, and I'm like, guys, chill out. I know you attended, like, an introductory, like, theory class in college or something, but you can calm down. I also like how they have like the titles in Latin and the episode previews. <sighs> oh my god, that's beautiful. Are you fucking serious? No, yeah, it's, it's like it's it's really kind of charming in a way. It it's kind of it's almost kind of like what we were talking about earlier with Vatican. Um, it's kind of like over the top, kind of like that, except it also doesn't take itself too seriously, just somewhat seriously right. sometimes it's very it balances itself pretty well i would say um but sometimes Mm -hmm. you just look at it and go oh my god what are they doing (laughs) yeah like there's some parts where it's just absolutely ridiculous but then there are some parts like there there's this one part in episode three where i was like whoa holy fuck slow down there like chill out what are you doing with like the degree of like just like how zero to 60 like serious it got at this one point in the episode oh no i haven't seen but... episode three i'm missing out oh it's oh it's 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 good it's I, yeah you're 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 pretty much like spot on matt it it does a really nice job of balancing these things out because it, it definitely does not take itself way too seriously but you know it does have enough self-respect to know like what it wants to do and where it's going with its story yeah i guess it's just a story with stakes and knows how to play its comedy out from that yep 
and and that's kind of the thing because like um i genuinely do feel like there are some stakes present in this story um it hasn't betrayed that sense yet i feel like it could potentially do yeah. that but i i I, I, f- I feel like it's doing a pretty strong job of you know firmly cementing okay this is a situation folks are not guaranteed to be safe hmm yeah i i can kind of see that um it hasn't escalated there yet but right um it kind of has the potential to like you said yeah and i i really want it to but if we're being totally honest i, I, I think don't it's fine think if it, it does will. yeah like i mean if, if it doesn't that's totally okay because it's done a really solid job keeping my interest so far without doing that so but it would it, it would be a nice surprise if it did yeah okay the, the, and then seeing how it, the, plays it out. has a lot of potential for sure um like there's a lot of stuff here like it's already pretty good but depending on where it decides to go it can go all sorts of different ways and most of them would be pretty good like i can see it turning out to be uh pretty well i think i checked the light novel um just just to see what people thought of the light novel it's got like an 8.3 um okay. so um there's only a point th- three where mm, on mal oh okay um so take it with a grain of salt. i mean there's only a thousand <laughs> members but you know <clears throat> seems like um i mean people have said that the light novel seems to be pretty good but i have no idea what that entails so right and okay. what i've seen so far it seems to be pretty good i've i've liked it it's it's kind of like uh I guess in the way I put it in my notes, and I think I've read this somewhere, so this is not quite all of my words, but it's kind of like if you took the the cynicalism of the uh, cynicism, I don't know what the word is there. Cynicism. cynicism. There we go. Yeah. It's, the, it's like cinnamon. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll just remember that. It's like, Whatever works. Okay, it's if like you, if you took the cinnamon took... of... Um, Challenge. <laughs> of yahari's main character like in the season one like how he's like kind of like that oh, his, okay. uh, kind of like his internal monologuing kind of like yeah, kind of like that actually. if you took and just make it external and spread it across a bunch of characters um no no um it's kind of like that except like with the plot of baka to test um without the okay. comedy it's yeah well without all the comedy. without all the comedy yeah there's some comedy still so I also see a romance tag on here. Um, yeah, it it could get there, but they're idiots right now. Like <laughs> our our pro tags are. Really oh my god! Yeah, our, our our main characters are like I don't even know how the fuck they got in this school. No, they're either like, really smart like, or they're I, really <laughs> fucking stupid. I'm not really sure which. No, it really is like pocket to test them. Yeah, no, they're they're straight up a fucking treasure map. Like here here is your GPS map of. You know, here is your destination. They are love interests. They are going in circles right now, but they will get there maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Like it's it, it, that's the most predictable part of this thing so far. Like I, it, it, what? Yeah, I, oh, Zach, did you notice the cool thing that they're doing in the credits of the show? I don't know if you noticed that. That they're adding up the points at the end of each yeah, episode. Yeah, I think that's really cool. It, it's it's a very nice touch yeah that's, it's a little um, detail that i i like that so it's kind of like um i mean i haven't seen the show but is it kind of like um uh shoot look at this guy he's magical um <laughs> a Moggy brilliant park <laughs> thank you is it kind of like a Moggy brilliant park where uh the the post credits they had that little tally count of the visitors uh yeah kind of like that actually um okay it's not exactly like as prominent, but it's like in the scrolling credits, like where you would find like normally the staff for a show, like it's, oh, okay. it's there. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, like you know, it uh when it shows you know the the different like cast of characters, the voice actors and such. Yeah. It also shows a total of how many uh, points that they have next to their character's name. 
to oh, like Oh really? So it's broken yeah. down by the individual character. Yeah. Well, like <clears throat> yeah, for the credits at least. Right, right. That's what I like. Like yeah, still the, the whole thing is still like, you know, house D 20 points. <laughs> but for... it's it's kind of funny <laughs> yeah, watching whatever. the characters of uh, individual points kind of vary between episodes that's kind of interesting yeah it's great it's, it's a nice little detail it's... that didn't need to be there but now i want it to be there every episode because i think mm. that's interesting cool it's good stuff i'll i'll try to give that one a try then uh because i'm probably dropping a couple other shows um so wow cool. Listen, uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Cone Beanie just does not do it for me. Really, man. Like, <laughs> I can't believe how many how many episodes have you watched of that? I have watched two. How is it taking? You, how is it taking you two to see that? And no, think, I was hmm, out. I was out episode one, but I I I felt like I've already started it. I'll Don't do one it. more. Oh, Don't no, do no, that. No, 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 I, no. I started doing that with a couple of shows, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing this. The, this is a bad the, loop. The only thing I liked about the show, and it's sad, the only thing I liked about the show was that first opening <laughs> for the show <laughs> where he's running through town <laughs> to the social network soundtrack. <laughs> Running in his fucking poofy jacket. Yeah. Like sprinting all over. And it's so fucking fight. dramatic, and the song is sick, and I swear, like, I swear Trent Reznor did the soundtrack to that part. It's, like, it's amazing. And then and then at the end of it, it almost turned into, like, a, a, a black coffee commercial where she's just waiting at the at the convini, and she's like, here, a drink. <laughs> it would have made an amazing commercial. That's the only thing I like about the show. I don't even like the OP because the OP is just all is just a montage of every single scene from the first episode. I know, isn't that so bad? Yeah. Uh, and the best thing about that it. is that the first episode is a montage of those scenes, anyways. <laughs> it it is. literally montages them over a monologue, and then the only thing they change for the OP is that they replace the monologue with music. Yeah, I yeah. like um, especially in Convenient where. <laughs> basically that like as you said in the first episode they kind of just rushed through some of the opening episodes like they had to get it in there <laughs> like yeah they're like shit this was in the op we gotta it's gotta, we gotta be fit in it somewhere. in there somewhere <laughs> here are some people swimming whatever whatever we're just gonna throw it in it's fine oh there's a guy that's cooking and we gotta zoom in on his face it's cool we got him all right we got that <laughs> shot done let's move on <laughs> like it's like they forgot at the very like last four okay. minutes the best thing about it is that I love how both self-aware and self-stupid <laughs> this show is because they literally go, wow, that's just, that's just like a um, shit. That's just like a yaoi thing. And then and then they do the exact thing they were talking about unironically. I know. Yeah. It's. And I'm sorry, it's not yaoi. I can't remember the actual um, sign in. What is, what is it? Shonen Eye? The, the one... Shonen Eye, yeah. That kind of thing. Um, where it's it's specifically entailed for for girls in Japan, and so maybe, maybe there's a trope the right surrounding time. that in which... Maybe it's, well, maybe it's the shoujo. The one that I'm thinking of know. is... I don't really know. I mean, there, there's a difference um, between shoujo the one that, and <clears throat> shonen eye and shoujo eye. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, 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 more show, it's more shoujo. It's a shoujo romance where it's it's written a specific way. Like... It's it's that same thing that that was um, that was made fun of like a couple of, of uh, series ago with um, the guy who's who's a mangaka for that and then like the girl confesses to him. Nozis- Nozaki Kun, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing that they make fun of there, where it's just this wonderful trope of like these incredibly handsome guys that really don't look like they're in high school, and then. And then, like, and one of them looks like a fucking dinosaur man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I can't. I can't fucking, I'm not gonna be able to unsee this. I, I he, hate this. He's the only person I remember. D- fucking Masamune looks like the goddamn dinosaur from that fucking Yeet video. His head is Manable. his head. Like his neck is like two feet fucking long. His face is. <laughs> His face looks like someone ran an iron over it. It's I can't unsee it. 
I had to drop it. This is very graphic. <laughs> I don't like irons to the face. Like, like, we'll see, like, we'll look, send like, you the image, Matt. you got to put that in the YouTube version. Oh, podcast. no. I'm not oh, photoshopping no. anything. Oh, my gosh. Like, like the, the show has a lot of issues. Oh, it does. The whole it's show is an issue. The, the fact that it exists. The entire yeah. thing. My point being, like, the entire thing is a fucking trope, and it's so sad that it even brings it up, saying, "Wow, that's just like a trope," and then it does the fucking <laughs> trope. Like, yeah, like it's not. Oh my it gosh. doesn't. It doesn't make you self-aware or intelligent if you talk about something and be like, "Haha," and then you still do it, and you still do it shittily, and not in a way that's like. You know satire what's kind of interesting? Nature. It's not clever. It's not cute. What's kind of no? What's Oh, what's, what's interesting about this is that uh, out of all the first episodes that I watched this season, you know how many times I saw that exact scenario happen where they say, hey, it's just like in a thing. And then they do the thing. That was like three times that happened in the first episode of these shows that I watched. Jesus Christ. Wait, what were the other shows that did that? Uh, I think one of them was Battle Girl High School. And... <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I forgot that was... The crazy. other one was... Um, what was it? It was another bad show. It could have been like Tenshi no 3P or something. It was... Hey, but that's a good point to make, Matt, that you said that they're bad shows. I wonder why they're bad shows. Maybe it's because they're not fucking self-aware. It's like they try so hard and then it's you do the exact same thing that you're making fun of. In the end, it doesn't... It's matter. like it's Just some weird type joke. of self-deprecating humor. Like, it's one of those It's one of those times that the comedian gets up there and be like, <laughs> I'm a piece of shit, and then everyone in the audience doesn't want to laugh because they're like, this is actually really awkward because he kind of is a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's it, You can only go so far with self-deprecating humor, and then people start to hate you. They're like, okay, we get it. <laughs> oh gosh and that's exactly what this is it's like i hate that it brings it up in the first place as if that somehow makes it intelligent and then it just does the thing anyways it it even has the stereotypical thing that you might see within the same trope of like a scene where the two boys are being boys and they're wrestling and then the little and then like the the little brother shows up and says mom brother's gay and then they're like oh no no, i'm I'm, I'm not gay (laughs) fucking stupid that was dumb oh my gosh i i really was about to turn it off after that i was like this you should have so just dumb. done it yeah i i i hate this like i said i gave I it two episodes it. and i'm dropping it so i can easily pick i'm gonna up give it one more Nicoso. i'm gonna give it the good episode three you brave soul oh my god don't do man. this to yourself i don't think i'll be able to stand it after episode three but i'm gonna give i'm gonna try no god I'm going to try. <sighs> Look, I mean, I, I, I couldn't watch it because it's a bad show and because it has Dinosaur Man. So if you want to go for episode three. I'm going to at least try for the episode three, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. That really got me. Um, can we move on? Um, we can. Let's move on. I think it's for the best. <laughs> okay. Um... <clears throat> I think we've actually talked about every show that I'm watching except for um, I watched a little bit of Made in Abyss. You need to watch more of Made in Abyss. You need to watch all of Made in Abyss. Well, hold on. It's not all out yet. (laughs) No. You need to go to Tokyo, hold them at gunpoint, and then make sure that we can watch Made in Abyss. Let's not do that. Whoa. No. Let's not do that. No. I'm not I'm not quite as enthusiastic about this as you are. Um we don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> and that is you right now. Um I don't know, like I mean I was that a I terrorist joke a lot. in my podcast? <sighs> Moving on. Oh wow, that's never happened. Um I, I wasn't expecting a lot from Made in Abyss, if we're being totally honest. Um but it actually just, like, it seems like it's going to be a, a fun little action adventure kind of thing. Yes, and that's exactly what I, I wanted it. from it. I wanted, because I read the synopsis, and then I looked at the art, and, and like, the, the, the first PV for it, and I was like, this is going to be a cute adventure about some little kids, and it's going to be great. 
and that's exactly what I wanted. Like, I, I looked at the art design, and I almost said to myself, I was like, it's kind of like Cave Story the anime. <laughs> and... <clears throat> I don't know, like, it was kind of weird. It gave me, like, weird shades of Madoka for a moment there. Oh, really? But, like, I, I don't know why specifically. It was something about, like, their facial structures. Oh, but... the, the, the very squishy, rounded faces kind of thing? And the sort of, like, scrunched-in facial features. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, and the yeah. tiny tiniest of tiny noses yeah but anyway no i i'm genuinely enjoying the show because it's just like adorable kids getting up to some cave adventures and i genuinely enjoy that i think i i think this show has a lot going for it and i also love the uh art style for all of the illustrated backgrounds and everything like that it's gorgeous um yeah it it really is a super pretty <clears throat> show like it is it is very nice to look at yeah and i love kevin pinkin and his fucking soundtrack for this show Th- like as soon as they had that one song which fuck i wrote down the name of it um underground the underground river yeah underground river which yeah. which it, it's not it's not the op it's just an insert song that that uh, the composer for the entire show decided to make for that specific moment um, just like kind of Suka Suka had their whole insert song of um, of Mulberry Fair, I think it was called, um, and it works perfectly. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous, and everything about it matches the scene and the tone of the show itself. I loved it. The soundtrack for this is immediately what knocked me into this. I was like, the art's gorgeous. I mm-hmm. like the cutesy design because I, I kind of like cutesy things. And then and then all of a sudden I heard the. I, I heard the soundtrack and I was like, hot fucking shit. I'm watching the rest of this. Like, that's the thing. I, it caught me so off guard. Yeah. I was like, this is, this is not the music I was expecting for this show. I was expecting some, you know, like very standard, hey, check out this cool fantasy setting we have kind of music. But it's, yeah. it's like, <clears throat> wait, what? It's like, and I believe that's Kevin Pinkin actually singing as well. And it, whoever it is they have a really beautiful voice for that moment it was it was really nice i liked that a lot oh uh-huh yeah um it's no, I... and i also like uh that it's it's this in, like the main character is this uh, a female character that's a go-getter and on top of her, on top of that her mom's a fucking badass i'm like how many shows can you think of in which like they have that that dual thing going and it's and they're they're doing so such a good job of it. I, I just yeah. I just really like that from the perspective of like we have this main character that's that's really awesome. Yeah, she's kind of a, a punk kid that like doesn't quite get the rules and all that and um and kind of rambunctious. But then on top of that, like her mom is fucking awesome, and I loved hearing the backstory for her in episode two. Like I've only watched I've episode, episode one. Oh, okay. Two. It's it, it it got me real psyched. Uh, episode two is is a lot more of what you kind of felt in episode one. It just starts delving into it and basically sets up what the rest of the series is going to be. It like a specific plot points happen that then say, okay, this is our main objective for the series. Hmm. And that's um, at least so far that I've seen. I haven't seen episode three or or onwards yet. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of um, interesting discussion surrounding Made in Abyss. Um, I guess I'll start with my kind of tidbit. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a pretty good show. Um, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Um, and, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not really too into it, um, but I think it's cool. Um, it's definitely a good show. Um, and the characters are fun, uh, and I like the concept of just having the abyss as a as a setting, kind of. And, and the way that cool. they set up the rules and stuff for it um, is are, are really cool too. I like how they it how they delve into that. It very much scratches my dungeon crawler itch. Yeah. yeah, in that sense, <clears throat> like it's it's neat. I'm I'm kind of your opinion, Matt. Like I mean, I I like it. I'm not crazy about it. But I'll watch it, and I and I get that I'm probably the only one in this group that that is crazy about it. But I am absolutely crazy about it. Like I'm I'm really enjoying that. I also like the tiny little details too that like they don't outwardly explain to you. Um, like 
I like that their desks are set up on a wall that they have to climb to because they're teaching them from a young age that you kind of have to take care of yourself and you're going to be doing a lot of climbing if you're going to be diving down into the abyss. Um, mm-hmm. And, and it, it was just a tiny little detail that I thought was really neat. And then you also have more details about since this whole thing's built about around people finding relics and bringing them to the service, you see a whole bunch of like neat trading and bartering and different things about the town that are about that. Um, Mm -hmm. And I also like that each episode ends with us uh, seeing a little bit more of that map at the very end that's really super pretty and and detailed that like shows how the different levels of the abyss and and how it goes down. It's kind of like a you are here and this is where we got in this episode kind of thing. I see. Okay. Yeah. um. (laughs) And then, uh, uh, sorry. And then, uh, and then the last thing is I had it in this, in this notes that I loved that she named him after her pet dog. I was just like, we named the dog Indy. And it just kind of went, kept going. I was like, ha, it's funny. Tiny, tiny little jokes like that. I I enjoyed because it's a bunch of little kids being little kids. And I kind of like that. Yeah, I saw several people pointing those out on Twitter, especially the the stairs classroom thing that you were talking about. I saw that pointed that, out. That, and uh, I also saw how the main character unapologetically says that she probed the guy's asshole. Yeah, that totally <laughs> it was happened. It's like, no, wait a minute, what the fuck? <laughs> it was that was that was funny. Um, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of people that like this show. Um, I think a lot of people are really scared about what's going to happen. Um, I heard that the original source material starts getting real fucking deep. Um, actually, um, so I went and delved into some uh, stuff about that. I'm not going to say anything about sure. it, but... Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it gets pretty heavy, um, I would say. Hmm. Um, like... Oh, so it I is mean... like Madoka. <laughs> I, I kind of picked up a little bit on that in the yeah, first it, episode. Yeah, it, it hints at it. a child almost fucking dies. Um, yeah, and I don't know how far like it's going to go with that. Ten anyway, minutes. But... And I'm okay if it starts getting a little darker. I think that's fine as long as they do a decent job of it, that it just doesn't come out of nowhere, or that it just starts feeling like, okay, I think you're going a little too far, especially in the case of like kids that aren't even 12, I don't think. Yeah. But I, I guess we'll see. Yeah. Um, if they do it well enough, they do it well enough. I was I was surprisingly okay with uh, how dark things got with Madoka. So we'll see. Yeah, it just depends on how, how they choose to do it or if they choose to do it at all. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. I just wanted to voice that because that was a big concern for a lot of people. So. I'm glad I'm oh, glad that you did, yeah, because I remember seeing that uh, on Twitter before, and it, it had me real nervous because I was like, "Oh no, I'm really enjoying this though." <clears throat> well, cool. Yeah. Moving on. But uh, but that's about me tapped out. So. I'm trying. To... What else are y'all watching? I never got started on. Um, I never got started on uh, Shokoku no Altair. Okay. Um, uh, Did anybody watch that one? Alt, alt, Altair, Altair. Alt, Altair. I, I want to say Altair. it like Assassin's Creed. I don't know why, but I'm like, I, to me, I look at that. I'm like, that's the exact name of uh, Assassin's Shukun Creed Altair. one. Oh yeah, I saw that and then thought I don't care. <laughs> really? I actually saw the opening. And I was like, this potentially could be interesting. It's it's another 24 episode series, so it's kind of slow. Um, oh really? I didn't even realize that it was. Um, so. I watched the uh, watched the first couple episodes. It's kind of like uh, what's the kind of way to put this? It's kind of like um, hmm. It takes place in like kind of obviously from the names. It's like totally in the desert Turkey area, like like that old mm-hmm. kind of. Um, okay, so kind of a, kind of a Middle East kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like ancient, not ancient. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Because it's not like Middle Ages. It's not medieval. Like, is it medieval? I don't even know. Um, uh, it's kind of like uh, it, it depends. It's got like <clears throat> swords and castles and stuff. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, but, but I it's mean, in like, like it's like in a say, desert. Like, 
Right, and it's when different. people say medieval, they usually mean Western culture, yeah, European so kind of thing. Yeah, so it doesn't really fit. But it, yeah, but we're looking at like traditional like Arabian Nights, you know. Yeah, that's kind of what kind of I'm thing. looking. That's kind of what the, this is. Kind of a show like that. It's very. Yeah, I I know what you're reaching for. I can't help you because I, yeah, I I don't I, know I'm history. Not well I'm not a history person. Um, <clears throat> sort sort of kind of in the vein of like magi. Yes, like that. that's what I would say. Something. It's very similar to that. Uh, basically, this guy is the leader of a nation. And he has to fight political battles, and there's wars and stuff, and there's sabotage and shit. Yeah, and that's kind of what attracted, oh, wait, that, to, attracted it to. That actually sounds kind of interesting, yeah. actually. Never mind. I, I saw the PV for it, and I saw all of that in the PV, and I was like, this actually genuinely looks really interesting. Um, especially because, like, the way that the PV opens up, I'm like, this is kind of like a game of civilization. It kind of is, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's kind of like that kind of style though it's totally like this guy's trying to run a nation here and he's kind of young kind of inexperienced he has a lot of people helping him and yeah. there's other nations that are being assholes to him and to the people that he <laughs> knows and is friends with and allies with so i also saw a guy with a giant onion hat and i was like sold yep that totally happened <laughs> that that's totally one of the characters in the show <laughs> i love those hats no, I. That sounds incredible. Yes, I, I, I was interested in it, but you said it's, it's currently kind of like a slow burn. It's, it's pretty slow. Um, it, well, it's, it gets into the thick of it pretty fast, but it's like, um, it's building. It's one of these anime that kind of starts, like, there's obviously stuff going on, but it hasn't reached anywhere near its potential. Like, I guess that makes sense though, if it's twenty four episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It just, just I think I think it's gonna get there. It's just gonna take some time. So, let me ask you, uh, how white are the Middle Eastern people? <laughs> because um, I've been noticing a couple of issues this season with that, like Vatican, where they go to Central America and weirdly everybody's white. <laughs> um, I mean, <clears throat> some of the characters, others are okay. Uh, some of them are like that others are not i don't know the explanation behind that or whatever i mean it is a fantasy series in this case so and and i'm not saying that that's going to be like fucking dropped or something like that i just i I was looking at the pv and i was like that's actually a little funny (laughs) yeah it's just kind of just kind of weird it's 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 an okay show i kind of like it um it's not like the best of the season has to offer but it's pretty good like i mean there's no reason to hate it right now yeah okay Okay. Well, Nino. I mean, there's a show. There's a lot of shows that have just a lot of potential to hate, but that's not one of them. Well, that's nice to know. Okay, I might check that out then. Yeah, that was that was the last one on my list that I, I meant to get to, or or a part of my list that I, I I actually did end up watching. We've talked about all the ones that I actually ended up watching. Um, the exception being, I, I've obviously I've started on Soccer Quest, but. I'm not halfway through and into like this. What's going on this season with Soccer Quest? Yeah, and I kind of re- tapped myself out on Recreators last episode. So, yeah. Um, oh, wow. And I, I'm excited to get to those, and I'm excited to talk more about them. But I think it's it's middle of the season. We we can talk about them if you guys want to, or we can like wait until the end and just go go ham since the the, they'll have finished up um well probably best to wait at this point because we've kind of discussed them as it has i mean is there anything like any shows that like really stick out i mean as far as uh this season like anything that you think like we should talk about like i mean we all know centaur's garbage um there i'll just address (laughs) that um address that right now um I, d- I was interested, and I don't know if you ever got to it, Matt. I was genuinely interested in uh, the Reflection Wave. S- simply, and I, I realize it's kind of sad, but simply because it is one of those that, like, legitimately... Well, he doesn't have too much to do with the writing and everything like that. It, it is uh, one of the ones that um, was at least partially created by Stan Lee. So I'm I'm interested to see about that one how it is as a as a kind of like hero hero thing, what's what's decent about it. Um, the animation is pretty much what you'd expect. Um, 
It's... I also saw they have an animated version of Stan Lee. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. Also, he totally narrates the episode previews. Oh, that's cool. I assume he's narrating in English. Yeah, it's okay. completely in English. That's interesting, actually. Um, uh, besides that, I mean, it's kind of like a standard superhero comic thing. Like, the art style looks interesting to me. It's it's kind of a cool merging between um, anime and comic book style, like Western comic book style. Yeah, like the characters are drawn like anime, but it's in a style that's kind of comic booky. Um, yeah, that's ooh. really interesting. I'm I'm watching the PV right now. Oh, and they they do the whole like wham pow. Yeah, it's, that it's totally fantastic. happens too. Um, oh, I need to watch this now. <laughs> it, it's not for me, I don't think, but it's okay. it's pretty. Um, I mean, it's it's good. I don't. I, there's a lot of people that really hate it um, for obvious really? reasons. Um, What's that? It's not anime. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're not going to go into that. But there's a lot of people that are just. I think it's got like a five point two on Mal because Mal's shit. So you know how that goes. Wow. Um, good God. It's not anime. That's the biggest complaint. Um, is it, let me let me ask you though putting that to the side and trying to be as objective as possible is there anything about the story or the characters or just the, you know the sound design something about the show that would also give it that lower score um yeah like there's some it's kind of paced really slow um and also the animation doesn't move all the time hmm. um so it's kind of like it's drawn in this like comic book kind of style, but there's very little animation to it. Um, it's kind of very, oh. there's very little movement of the characters and it looks kind of janky sometimes. Um, Are you getting kind of a lot of weird stills? Yeah, stuff, stuff like that. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, I think they really knocked it down there, but um, I could s- well, at the same time, we've also seen certain series do something like that, where they put in a in a kind of almost still style, and it, it did well. Like Scum's Wish, I think, is a great example of a show that actually used a lot of like still images and like references to the original manga in its style. Um, but I thought that that worked real well for it. And in, in this case, it's not the same thing. Um, no, it's not really like that. It's not like the directing is still. It's like there's no the directing is standard and the animation does not move kind of thing mm. so okay well that's kind of disappointing it's kind, yeah. it's kind of weird um i mean i i, I guess you would notice sense. if you watched like the first like two minutes where there's like no dialogue it's very weird um okay hmm. I'll give it a I'll give it a shot since you said it wasn't too terrible. Yeah. Um I if nothing else I think it's a very interesting venture to kind of combine western comic book style and um and and in a more like anime manga style together. I I think that is interesting to do in the art and I think that's what what's attracting me right now. Mm-hmm. Besides the fact that like well Stan Lee is not the greatest dude in the in the world like he's put on a high festival but realistically like there's there's a lot of other better comic book creators out there, but like, I, I I have respect for him for what he tries to do at least. So yeah, I'd say give it a shot if you, especially if you're interested in the style and stuff. It's worth at least trying. Okay. Um. Besides that, oh, it's got a uh, another English composer for the music, just like Made in Abyss. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah interesting. That is interesting. Um. Is anybody watching Fastest Finger first? Or non Maru Sanbatsu? Uh, I'm a, sorry, I'm an 11 year old. Um, what the heck? No. I, I mean, like, I'm interested in the idea of it, but not enough for me to really check it yeah, out. Yeah, I, I put it as a maybe for me because I, I kind of wanted to watch it, but at the same time, I wasn't, like, hugely sold on it. Okay. It's like, ugh, quiz bowl. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay. I actually kind I, of I, really I, like that show, so okay. That's fine. Oh, really? Um, no, 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 no. Like, sell me. I mean, dude. so <clears throat> it's definitely a comedy anime. Um, because, I mean, it's all about a, a nerdy-ass kid that knows all this shit 
and he's gonna be a quiz poll person and mm-hmm. it, it's kind of similar and this is gonna sound completely contradictory but it's kind of similar to the uh gamers kind of thing where there's a guy that wants to join a club but he doesn't want to join the club even though he's got the ability to join a club kind of thing oh he's he's not sold on it kind of thing <laughs> yeah um but i mean after the first episode he's kind of like yeah this could be fun cuz i think what's really cool about the show just to me is that first of all the characters are actually pretty cool like there's no like I... there's no like weird um i guess like the characters feel realistic i guess um okay and basically it's um it really captures this essence of this quiz bowl as kind of like this club like and i kind of knew what quiz bowl was but i didn't realize like holy shit like there's a lot to that <laughs> like um like you have to know the facts you, but you don't just have to know the material you have to like um use all these context clues and stuff to find out like questions and shit um there's tricks and tactics to it um it kind of seems kind of like club shenanigans but the characters make it really enjoyable and it gives this real sense of thrill like when the when they start these quiz competitions and like questions start rolling across the screen and like especially if you know the answer and then you get it right and oh it's kind of like playing it's kind of like playing along with a game show yeah it's it's exactly like that i would say it's definitely very oh, close oh, to that, a game show anime than that anything else genuinely seems enjoyable to me i actually wrote you, that you down have, you have sold me yeah you have sold me on this now yep okay well i yeah i i'm definitely at the point where i i'm going yeah to it's it's now. legit i i yeah, I like the two things that you said, that the characters are uh, kind of realistic and that it's it's like playing along with a game show. I'm sold now. Yeah. Um, the, I think the voice, act, the voice acting for the show is pretty good. Um, like, the main uh, girl character is... She's kind of... Um, it's And it's kind of interesting because she's kind of this... Uh, kind of not like a... It's, it's really interesting because she's kind of like a stock character in the fact that you would like think, well, she comes off as a stock character, that she's kind of like a little bit like, you know, um, she's headstrong, but she's a little bit like sun in some areas, but, but the voice mm-hmm. acting completely makes it not seem like that at all. Um, she seems oh, really, really down to earth and like very not dramatic like sundere like you would normally expect it not super tropey yeah it the and it's amazing how the voice acting can change that so much um and it's not the first i'm not the first person to comment on that there's a couple people that have been like wow her voice actor's doing a really good job with the character it was kind of like uh it reminds me of um i think it was you zach that that your um undergrad um you explained the difference in in different portrayals of of shakespeare plays and how just the way that you say a line can impact like whether it is a powerful line or whether it shows a weaker character uh, i mean like yeah you know any kind of performative art whether you're just working through just body language or just the tone of how you say one line can completely change any sort of interpretation or things of that nature so for for uh for a medium like anime that is very strongly and heavily reliant on how the voice actors work things yeah that makes a lot of sense awesome that that intrigues me that that is pushing me more towards the show yeah and definitely um as, as i said and that you helped me realize that i said it already in my notes um it's definitely very game show-esque especially like episodes two and three it's very it's very fun to watch and it gets you excited and i and i like that feeling i like game shows so i guess that might just be me but i no 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 no. gosh i no 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 yeah yeah yeah. i like i i I used to uh i used to sit down with with the whole family and we'd get and we'd watch like who has to be a millionaire or, or jeopardy together so like no i completely get where you're coming from here 
Yeah, I, I think I think you guys would like the show if you just give it a shot. It's it's very it's very uh, toned down. It's not it's very not anime. Um, it's it's just in an anime style. I, I not anime as in it's not like a fucking trope book out of like fucking that's, whatever. That, that's very that's nice. so pleasant. That's very nice. Yeah. And so okay, yeah, I'll definitely. Yeah, it's go. definitely a good show. Um, I would like to point out before we move on, by the way, that uh, Trevor Horn, who is helping with the music on Reflection Wave, was also the producer for Kiss from a Rose for Seal. So I'm watching <laughs> Reflection Wave. <laughs> I know that doesn't have much to do with it, but that just cracks me up. I'm watching Reflection Wave. All right, there you go. Awesome. Nice. Uh, I mean, this... no, I can't think of. I think we're, we've kind of covered most stuff that we all kind of got to, didn't we? Um, yeah. was there anything else that you'd like to point out since you've seen more than us? Um, the only other thing I guess I would like to note. Um, let's see. Um, I know. How you maintain no gal is bad. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Don't watch that. Um, did you did you watch Fate Apocrypha? Nope. Apocrypha? I have okay. not touched that. Yeah, it's like that one and Boku no Hero, I would love to get to. And I absolutely would love to watch. But it's one of those things where I have no basis to start. I have not seen season one of Boku no Hero. And I haven't seen any of the Fate series. And I know that that's like a complete disservice. So I, I need to remedy that. It's just like, I just can't really comment on those, unfortunately. I wish I could. Yeah, um... Chronos yeah. Rulers is like a half CG project, so maybe Zach will be interested in that. <gasps> oh shit! So, oh Zach, that's right up your alley. Yeah, go check that out. Um, I don't know if it's any good. Um, I mean, I watched it, but you it's know, not. It's kind I, of okay. I've I've heard a lot of folks on any Twitter actually saying some pretty interesting things about the show. Okay. Yeah, go check that out then. That sounds like it's right up your alley. It's not really up mine, so. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll give that a go. Um, you had me at 3D CG. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, I saw uh, I saw Bob da pointing out action heroin cheer fruits. That's an okay show. As fucking weird of a name that is. Um, action hero. Heroin cheer fruits. Oh yeah. Kind of it's Whole kind of like states so they have like local heroin fighters. It's kind of like a uh, local doll except if it was fucking good. Um so <laughs> Um so that's pretty it's pretty good. It's superheroes and there's cool little personal stories of these girls that want to just, you know, save their town. It's kind of nice. It's neat. Um I, it's not necessarily anime series, but I am very interested in. Um, I believe the movie. Um, shoot, what is the English called? Uh, Mary to Mojo no Hana. The. Oh, Mary and the Witch's Flower. I believe that's coming out uh, this season, and I, I, I think it looks very interesting. It's a, it's almost Studio mm-hmm. Ghibli, but it's not Studio Ghibli that's doing it. Yeah, it is very much in that vein, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the trailer looks fascinating, so I, I I really want to get to that. Is that is there anywhere that you can view that? I don't think it's out yet. Um, it's July eighth. I I know. I mean, like I I saw. Um, I watched Kiki's Delivery Service um, in theaters this week because Fathom Events was doing some shit with that, mm-hmm. and I saw a trailer for it. And I think they're going to be doing some stuff with that at some point. Oh, please have an American release, please. Just eat, please. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, it was a fucking sub version of Kiki's that I watched in theaters, <laughs> but. Well, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, I mean, it might come out. It'd be really cool because it looked really neat, and they showed a trailer for it. So. I don't even know what we're talking about right now. I'm lost. It's a it's a movie. The I I, I saw it down there. It just says it comes out July eighth. Yeah. Um... It, it looked very interesting, and it, 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 it looked like it was going to be a good movie, so I'm hoping that there's some type of release. Uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know what the fuck it's about, but it looks neat. That's cool. Um, maybe there would be a release. I don't know. That yeah, is happening Shaft more. Shaft has a movie coming out as well. 
Yeah, I think that actually got delayed. Yeah, this, at least Danny chart says August 18th. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I remember just hearing it got delayed. I don't know if that's the new date or not. Yeah, Ushiage Hanami? Yeah. Which is something about mm. fireworks, isn't it? S- Hanabi. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Um, fireworks. Should oh. we see it from the side or the bottom? That's apparently the <laughs> English title. <laughs> yeah, I love it because the title looks is so stupid, but then I saw the trailer for it and I was like, oh, that actually looks really good. <laughs> I was like, why would you have such a weird title for a very in- for a very interesting looking movie? I mean, we kind of watched a series called like you know, what are you doing at the end of the verse? Uh, are you busy? Will you save us? Are you busy? Yeah. I don't. I don't mean to pry. Are you busy right now? <laughs> We're about to die. Yeah. Yeah. But uh. Um. Yeah. I. I guess. Is there anything else, Matt, that really stuck out to you? Uh. Well, I guess, just really quick, uh, if uh, Classroom of the Elite is fuck capitalism, the anime, um, I guess Koita Uso is fuck uh, socialism, the anime, so... Uh, there you go. <laughs> what? I'm so- no, 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 I'm sorry, wait, back up a second. What do you mean by this? It's... it's what? My dude, do you not know the synopsis no, of Koita Uso? No, I don't know anything about this. It's basically, uh, you get assigned a marriage partner by the government... And it's kind of like, and I hate to compare it to Scum's Wish, because it's nothing like Scum's Wish. Um, the look of it looks like Scum's Wish, and I think that's why you're not the only one that's that's pointed that out. I don't know anything about the show, but I did see that. It's kind of got some relationship stuff that's like Scum's mm-hmm. Wish. It kind of gets nested, and it's very complicated. Um, oh. um, I wouldn't exactly it put good? it in the same drama kind of category it's more of a romance but um it's it's okay it's okay. it has its weird moments it's not like it's not like gripping like scum's wishes if that's what you're asking okay it's different but it has kind of a similar plot mm. and it's a similar art style i don't know why they went for that um because Scum Swish, well, I guess I can't say that Scum Swish did well because it didn't it, go on a platform that actually does well. Uh, well, this didn't go on a platform that went well Zero. either, so. Haha. Hmm. Yeah. It's such a shame, too, because there's so many good shows on there. Oh, yeah. On Fuck Animation Netflix. Radio. Gotta get that in. I, I, want a, I want fucking Kakiguri, man. Yeah. I do, too. Like, like for real. Basically I know. <laughs> Kakiguri is good. I promise. Maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, anything else? Or do you want to? Do you want to wrap up here? Um, I'm I'm pretty much tapped out. Um, that's a lot of shows that we talked about. Though. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of, of shows. really cool shit. Personally, I'm excited yeah. for uh, Marvel Future Avengers. Uh, that'll probably never get subtitled, so have fun. <laughs> Man, I wanted to watch it at least, like, to see. You know, this like, is not what, the first what... one that's come out, either. There's several of these that have been kind of I in know, the vein of that. I yeah, kind of want like... to see it because I'm, I'm, I'm interested, as, as a guy who, who actively reads comic books, I'm interested to see, like, what the what the non-western market version of these superheroes is like how do they how do they kind of go go at those these characters yeah but i also understand it's like a kid's show and those typically don't get subbed and, and brought over here unless they really want to market that shit like you go obviously so that's okay shows yeah. that people want to watch like symphony or don't get subbed either Mm. I'll be the <laughs> vocal voice of those people that really want Symphony to come over here and still hasn't. So, or you know, the entire Monogatari series besides the movies. Uh, someone got Baki Monogatari recently. Someone <laughs> did. I don't remember who. Really? Um, it's one of those stri- for, for for a for a dub. Uh, not a dub. For for like an official sub. It's, it's a sub release though. I think <gasps> I think Anime Strike might have it. You're blown. Damn mind. Um, Even still, yeah, it's anime strike, so uh, 
Have fun. <laughs> I salute those that go through the double paywall. Um, All right. Well, I, I guess we can wrap up then. Uh, if there's nothing else. Um, stay tuned for the um, Wari Monogatari Geh podcast. <laughs> I don't think. I, don't... I forgot that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. Geh. Geh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get a couple of those in before we end. (laughs) See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.